I am sure that this is the simplest possible explanation of the metric tensor of space time. So, what is the force mass acceleration relation? So, here it is. This is the Newton second's law. It states that the force is equal to the product of mass and its acceleration. But what is acceleration? Acceleration is a vector quantity which have different magnitude in different directions. So, we can extend this equation into following three equations corresponding to their three dimensions namely x, y and z. So, for a equation involving a vector like this, it's complex to write all these equations in different coordinates. To overcome this problem, we have introduced a tensor which on putting the value on n gives us their respective coordinates. So, instead of writing all these three equations, we can simply write that n component f is equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration in the nth dimension. So, what is metric tensor? Metric tensor is a tensor which defines the properties of space times and tells us that how space time is not absolute but relative or connected to each other. Now, I have been searching many methods to explain the metric tensor, but the simplest one I find that it can be explained by the Pythagoras theorem which you may be familiar with. So, what is Pythagoras theorem? It is simple and states that a square is equal to b square plus c square. Now, let's plot a graph with two coordinates x and y. When a particle moves some distance in x coordinate, and it also moves a distance in y coordinate. What is the resultant of these two motion? By applying the Pythagoras theorem, we find that the total distance moved is the sum of the squares of the values of the coordinates. So, in our case, there are two coordinates. So, the total distance moved is under root of x square plus y square. Now, we extend this area to different dimensions. So, what is the zero dimension? You know it is a point. So, the distance move is zero. Now, we have one dimension and one dimension is represented as a line. So, when a particle moves a distance x in this coordinate, we have the total distance x. In two coordinates, as we have derived earlier, the total distance is the under root of x square plus y square. But in the third coordinate, which is our normal day-to-day -day space, the total distance move is the diagonal of the cuboid. So, the formula is under root of x square plus y square plus z square. Don't you find similar in this equation? Let's compare these equations. So, by observing these equations, you can finally draw conclusion that the total distance moved or the universal distance is equal to the under root of sum of squares of all dimensions so we can write in the summation notation that s squared is the total sum of different coordinates squared in the special relativity we have assumed that there are four dimensions three dimensions are already known and what is the fourth dimension you may know that the fourth dimension is time so we represent all these dimensions by a vector x subscript n where n ranges from 0 to 3 where x0 is t, x1 is x, x2 is y and x3 is z. So, what is the theory of relativity? Now, the total theory of relativity can be summarized in one line. It says that space and time are not absolute but they are dependent or relative to each other. So, they can't be just written as the sum of all dimensions because all dimensions are connected to each other. So, to overcome this problem, we introduce a metric tensor represented by Gn. And here also the n runs from the value 0 to 3. Now, we can rewrite using our metric tensor the equation we have derived earlier as this. Now, using special relativity, we can find the connectivity of time and space can be described as follows. Although it is not correct because we have discovered different dimensions such as wormholes. But the metric tensor can change and so we can represent our space time. 
so the metric tensor according to special relativity is this now we know that space time is a not a regular structure because there are many irregularities in our universe so we can overcome this problem by writing a quantity x as dx to specify the rates of change now we can edit our equation by adding the derivative now our final equation for the matrix looks like this now as i have stated earlier it is not the only matrix that exists in the real world there are many matrix corresponding to their situations i mean that the matrix of black holes are different from wormholes expanding universe so i will making videos on all of these situations thanks for watching